I feel bad about myself. I, I'm fragile and I hate being fragile. I'm like, Jade, you're a boss ass bitch. Like you can handle this. When you first start a YouTube channel, the least of your worry should be subscribers. It should be producing consistent content and finding your voice. How awkward are you in your first video? Most people are super awkward. I was, cue the footage. Focus. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. When you make 100 videos, you might not get more subscribers, but you get better on speaking video ideas, and editing. And these are skills you need before you grow a channel. Stop thinking about growing a channel, but starting a channel. And starting means you have to take out the expectation. Okay, the mindset you have to have, other than being a badass bitch, is you have to be optimistic. Like, before you make money, you're not gonna have any money. And it's so hard because people think like, oh, once I get these numbers, then I'll be confident. But you have to start with confidence in your ability first. A really good analogy of this is, say you look at Picasso, or a really famous artist. When you look at this artist, and they're painting the painting, right? Do you think when they're like 50% done with their painting, like? that they're not a good artist, right? Or do you think, no, they're just 50% of the way there to their final artwork? When Picasso finishes the art, then you see the masterpiece and you're like, wow, he's so successful and rich. But before the artist even picks up a painting brush, he still has value, right? You have to see that as yourself. You are someone that has potential. It's just a matter of time. It's almost kind of like my dad used to call this, like betting on future truths. Like maybe the truth is you're a broke ass bitch, but the future, you believe that you're not gonna be a broke ass bitch. How often are you posting? I was posting three times a day, but since that viral video, I kind of cut back a little bit because then I was like, okay, I want to be thinking more so about what I'm posting. Mm, I disagree. Yeah. I think TikTok, TikTok, right? We're talking about TikTok, not YouTube. We're not talking about Instagram. I think TikTok does not reward people for being consistent or over posting. It's genuinely the performance of the individual video. So TikTok is the only platform where the content that is fed to you is not based if you like if you're necessarily interested or not. Like I got a lot of memes that I don't like really know or I would search on my own. So the more experimental you get on TikTok, the more you can land on more for you pages and actually create more of an engaged audience. I think that what I would do is keep posting three times a day or whatever you feel like you can sit on comfortably. And then once you have the next series that pops off, whether it gets a million views or a hundred thousand, you can make a follow up from that. Today's video today. Imagine I did that in front of all my videos. I just, whenever my audience retention is going low, I just go, hey guys, what's up? Are you still paying attention? Okay. <laughs> I think the key is to do like crafty little shit that people can't click off. For example, one of the TikToks I posted yesterday recently had 250,000 views, which is really good for my account because I only have 100,000 followers. Anyways, instead of like creating a normal video of just me talking to the camera, I created a conversation out of myself to explain my idea. And I feel like the reason why this got so many views is because when you have a conversation with yourself or a conversation in general, it's one of those formats where you want to see what that other person said. Psychologically, you want to know how the conversation went, right? So here is the example. How sponsorships work. Let's go. Hi, I'm Tesla. I would like to sponsor your video. Cool, the cost will be $500. Hmm, that's a little too high. Sorry, we can circle back next quarter if maybe this is out of your budget, but that's my rate for now. If you're trying to care less about the haters, you need to start caring less about the compliments. If you're really trying to care less when someone doesn't like you, you also have to care less when someone does like you. Like a few months ago, I realized how pathetic it was that I was always refreshing my Instagram likes because I got so excited every time I beat my Instagram like record, right? And every time I got just like 10 more likes or 100 more likes in my last post, I was so happy. And I realized it was actually the source of a lot of unhappiness for me because I put so much emphasis and value into that moment. The minute I don't get that amount of likes, or I don't get those results, I disintegrate. I, I feel bad about myself. I, I'm fragile and I hate being fragile. I'm like, Jade, you're a boss ass bitch. Like you can handle this. And now I just really try to put less emphasis on the numbers and just kind of extract my emotions from results. So whenever I look at Instagram, instead of seeing like 10 likes making me happy, I just look at 10 likes as 10 extra likes, right? So that's what I've really learned. It's to really just detach yourself from the results in both aspects, positive and negative. Now, before you go ahead and comment below, Jade, why are you so numb? Who hurt you? You. I don't want you guys to extract your emotions from everything. I just think it's about being the mindset of like, when things are going good, humble yourself. And when things are going bad, call yourself a badass bitch. And then you'll kind of like level out in the middle, if that makes sense. Like I remember every good moment I had, I told my parents and they would just be like, Jade, you're, you're like, you're, you're bullshit. Like you're nothing. And then I'm like, dad, why don't you celebrate it with me? But I realized you were actually teaching me how to be humble and how to really like, just not like give in to, you know, 
external factors. Also, maybe they might have been causing emotional trauma, but I really, I really don't like to think that my parents were doing that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like you will see on your For You page random stuff that goes viral. And I think it has this wow factor that is unexplainable. And I just don't know why anyone would watch it, but it gets views. And I don't know how to mimic it because you can't just scream randomly. But definitely when you're out about in your life and you see something that's like, what the fuck, whether it's a chicken that looks like an ostrich running across the road, like take a video of it and upload it because you'd be surprised how TikTok would respond to it. It's, it's quite crazy. Like I feel like the point of TikTok is either you're making super educational high production videos that are so good or it's just like what the f actual fuck skr, skr, skr. If you're posting videos consistently for like two or three years, you're bound to have one video that gets views. So I was posting once a week and I remember switching from like beauty content to like business content because at this time I was like, I don't wanna be Bethany Moda anymore. I wanna be the Gary Vaynerchuk of the world. So I made a video about how to grow on social media because I was obsessed with Instagram at the time. And that was my first video that literally got like a quarter million views in a month. And that's never happened before in my entire career. Like I would have gotten like a thousand or 100 views and it would just stop there but this was around 2017 when i finally hit my first break keep in mind guys i started to make videos in like 2009 10 and it took seven years before i made a video that went viral and i really think it's so important to understand that because a lot of people look at emma chamberlain and this other circle and just expect that result but that is basically luck you know you can't control that outcome what you can't control is being consistent and showing up I don't know how many times this occurred when I had a video that was amazing. I went down to film it, then when I edited it, I had no footage and I couldn't make something out of the story. So it's really important to script because then it can maximize your editing time to create a better video. Now, creating a good video is so important. If people don't watch your video to the very end or it's not engaging on YouTube, the algorithm won't promote it to more devices and users. So therefore you might not be getting as many views. And we all know the feeling when your videos don't get views, it feels like you got stabbed in the back and you're not good enough. And that's not the case. It just takes a bit of practice. So for writing a good story, it really just comes down to having a beginning, middle and end. Whatever you talk about, it just needs to have a story plot. For the really basic version, there just needs to be an introduction, a problem, solve it and conclude it. That's it. If you're having issues uploading videos and you're not getting viewership, try your best to see who is someone that would probably watch my videos and who else are they watching. If you're someone that makes vlogs and they're watching Casey Neistat, you know, try to emulate that content and maybe do a Casey Neistat reaction video so you can get Casey's fans onto yours, right? The goal is to really just train YouTube to start recommending your content to the right people that are also maybe fans of another influencer or YouTuber. Over time, what you're gonna see is those viewers are gonna know who you are and then you can make whatever you want. So this is more of a temporary thing. The clumping period typically will take a few months. Now you might be asking Jade, how do I know I clumped my channel to someone else's? Going back into your data, if you take a look at your traffic sources, you can actually see who is your video being suggested by. I really do believe that the worst thing possible is if you, you know, maybe got something, a success or whatever, but you're not sure how to keep going and replicate it. That's why I really do believe if you have YouTube videos that have like lower view count, it's okay. And like, don't be afraid of that because that's actually a great thing because the minute that, you know, the algorithm does change, you know how to change with it because you've been through adversity, you've been through this shit and you can handle it. And I think that makes you a really strong person. And hey, it might take a lot more time to, you know, blow up again, but at least if you are dealing with this lower view count or like you are in a dip, you can at least keep going and you know that you can handle it.